Hello everyone, I am Bradley Sword, Associate Professor of Computer and Information Science at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois. And this video today is going to look at winning and losing conditions and basically everything in between. We're going to create what is called, what are called uh, controller objects to watch over the game and just basically just watch for certain events to occur. And so they don't necessarily have to be specific winning or losing conditions, they just have to be conditions. Uh, we're going to use the drag and drop interface just as an introductory example for my more, uh, more advanced game development courses. And we're going to use Game Maker Studio version 2. So I'm, this time I'm starting from nothing just because I'm going to create just a few little, a few little things um, to kind of get ourselves going. I'm just going to create a very simple clicky game. You click, you click, 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 and then certain things will occur. Uh, every time I click, I will increment a value for an object, and we'll just watch over to see, you know, basically just a f just whatever. I don't even really have a clue yet what I'm going to do when it comes to what conditions win, what conditions lose, what conditions do what they do. So let's get right to it. So I'm going to create one sprite, and just a simple eh, 64 by 64 is fine. I'm just going to go ahead and use my normal blue and yellow. I'm just, just just to have something. I'm really not a fan of Michigan Wolverine, but the color scheme is nice. Okay, so something like that. And then just to keep it simple, I'm gonna go ahead and center it just so the value, when I write the values out, they're as cl pretty close to center, uh, but they're not necessarily. So let's see, button sprite. Okay, so I'll need an object for that. Uh, create object, and I will call this one just, uh, um, let's see, let's name it, I'll call it this left, or the, <laughs> the left button, just what, I mean, just, just to have something, right, that's the whole goal of this, so I have nothing, nothing, let's put that in the room, so there's my left object, and so let's keep track of this, so I say, okay, when I start, create, um, if can I get this a little nicer, get this in here. Oops, that's too small. Oh man. That's, okay. Anyway, so uh, when I set this up, set up. I'll just I'll call it clicks. Set up a variable inside of here. Not the uh, last time around when I made this. I used the temporary one and I got myself into trouble. But I say, okay, I have this thing called clicks. It's set to zero. Uh, every time I do a mouse left pressed on it, I'm going to increment that. I'm going to take clicks and I'm going to add one relative. The relative, of course, means take whatever value is already stored inside clicks and add, and in this case, add one to it. So take whatever was previously there. If I unclick this, that means set clicks just to one. Doesn't matter what was in there previously. Uh, now it is absolutely one. We're not doing anything relative to what was in there before. Okay, so let's take over the draw event. Remember, I got to do a draw self because I'm I'm telling Game Maker I know better than you what I what I want to do in the draw event, but I still want Game Maker to draw that object for me, and so there's that. And then let's see, draw. Let's find the draw. Where is it? It's gotta be here. Draw set text alignment. Let's do do center center, center middle. Sorry, and now I can draw text or draw value with no caption. I'll draw that clicks value, and I will do that zero zero relative, so it's not drawn in the upper left hand corner of the screen. It's drawn in the up in the middle of where the the object is. So let's see. I have one of these objects in the room. There's my zero. So I click 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 click. Okay, so that's good. So now it gets a little tricky, especially if you're going to make a clicky game where you have multiple objects of the same type. If I'm going to be dealing with, uh, you know, like event handling, uh, condition handling kind of things, so you got to watch out for that. Um, if you, because I can't, I mean, of course, there's nothing stopping me from. Oops, the only thing stopping me is my myself by having five or six or ten or a hundred of these objects in the room, and they all, again, they all, they all react independently. It's not like if I click one, it affects every one of them. They are all individualized objects, and they all keep track of how many times they have been clicked compared to everybody else. But the problem becomes if I try to lump them in and I just use the, 
the keyword left in my code, it will it will actually just look for whatever the first object in my scene is that was created, which which, which happens to be I don't know. It's one of these five, but uh, it will not affect the others, and that's a big deal. So if you really want to do something like this where you're making a clicky game, you kind of have to, I mean, there are other ways to do this. We could use inheritance, and we could do all sorts of parenting. But for the moment, I'm not necessarily worried about that. But you to have a left object and a right object, let me get rid of this. Let me get rid of these guys so I have, oops. So I have a left object and a right object. So it's, you can see it over here. I'm, I'm, that's, there's my left object. It's on the left. There's my right object. It's on the right, which is good. OK, so now, just for the sake of this, let's now kind of, you know, so they both behave exactly the same. They both have a variable named clicks. <coughs> Excuse me. So then this is the left object, that's the right object. OK, so let's, let's try this out. And let's just put in, let's say, like, what is called a controller object. And so you will see these throughout, especially if you work with me, a lot of the, my stuff. I put these things called controller objects near the upper left-hand corner of the room. I have to create this thing. And since we're only going to have one, create, uh, one object of a controller type here, I will just call it controller just to make it simple on us. But the object, this object called controller, and the next thing you have to remember to do is, and this is what everybody, including me, forgets from time to time, is you forget to put it in the room. I like to put it up here. It just comes in as a question mark. Because I did a lot of times I don't need to give it a graphic or anything like that, but I, it exists. It's in my game, but it but it's just right now it doesn't do anything, right? It doesn't crash my game. There's no code associated with it. There is no sprite associated with it. But it's in my game running on a frame by frame basis. So, and that's what I want. I want something kind of watching over everything, not getting in the way until some condition is met. So now I can go in here and say, on a step-by-step -step basis, on a frame, you know, basically, at least in this condition, in a frame-by-frame -frame basis, just go ahead and just check to see if, and I could say, okay, is left dot clicks greater than or equal to 10. All right, fair enough. And they say, OK. So that just basically is asking, hey, the clicks variable inside that left button, is, it, is that value 10 or more? And if so, then we'll, we'll go in a second time. You've got to make sure you, you're dragging these in. If I'm going to combine the if statements, see how you can, you can do these in three different places? I want to add the second if as a condition to the first. So I want to add it over on the right-hand side. So both of these things have to occur now. I just have to spell it correctly. And so now if the left button's value of clicks is 10 or more, and the right value is 10 or more, then what do I do? Uh, let's see, can I? Uh, what can I do that can? Uh, make it fun here. Do I have access? I think I could just because I can't really show a message. I don't want to write code per se. How about I just end the game? Game end. I know that's not the best thing. I don't want to restart it or anything like that. Let's just say exit game. So the the game will run until I press left ten times and I press right ten times. That by combining them together, that is like an and statement. So here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, there's ten. You're like, oh my god, is that working? You don't know necessarily. There's my left one. Let me try my right one just to kind of. This is testing, right? I know it's hard to admit, but you should be doing two to three times at least more testing than you do making your game, uh, because uh, people are not going to play the game like you. People are going to break your game nonstop. They're not going to necessarily try to. That's the fun of programming, is things that you never thought about, people will do if, you, if, if your program runs long enough. So now let's see. I click this 10 times. There we go. I bring this up to 9 each. Oh boy. 10, and then game ends. And that's because this object's in my room. On a step-by-step -step basis, it goes, hey, 
What about this? What about this? Both of these are true? Cool. We're going to exit the game. And so that, I mean, winning game condition, losing game condition, it all comes down to just what do you want to do inside of this controller object? And in this case, in a step-by-step -step basis, I go if, if, and so this is, you know, basically this is where you, this is where the action happens. On a step-by-step -step basis, figure out what condition in your game has to be met or what conditions, and then what would you do to resolve that? In our case, th these are the conditions that have to be met, and this is the end game condition. And of course, this doesn't all have to be in one controller. You can have many, many controllers. Like I said, usually when I have a complex game, I have three, two, three, four, five controllers all watching over, all doing all sorts of different things. Like I have a controller object that watches over the camera so that maybe the camera takes over from Game Maker and shows the players on the screen differently than the game than Game Maker would by default and just just things like that in this case can just watching over uh, like if like a pong game like what's the score if the left score is 5 or more then the game's over but but or if the the right side score is 5 or more then the game is over for that player you can kind of get a feeling for that. Maybe like uh, you have to play a level until you get a certain score. Like, like, a, like a shooter game or something. Like try to survive until you get a million points. And what's the condition? Well, if I get a million points, then, then what do I do? That sort of thing. So that's pretty much it. I mean, it's really just the, the use of a controller object. Uh, we, most of our time was just spent setting things up. But this is basically all you want to do. And it doesn't always have to be a step event. There could be things that could be controlling this instead of that. You know, like in, like on a click event. Maybe on a left, like a global left pressed event or something like that. Uh, but the sky is the limit here when it comes to, you know, comes down to that. So this is a pretty small, pretty small example. So if you have any questions or concerns or if you'd like me to make up a, a follow-up video to this or, you know, anything at all, you can contact me at swordb at cud.edu, or you can comment below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So uh, let's see, my next video is going to be choosable characters. So like, how can I begin, how can I set up like a little menu and say, select a character to play, and then that character will begin the game or begin a different room uh, when you go to, uh, when you click on it and set that up. So I think that'll be a pretty fun example. And, uh, and I'll just keep pushing through and just creating cool stuff for you guys to use. So thanks for sticking it out with me, 11 minutes or so here. Have a great day, everybody. Take care. I'll see you next time.